Hey guys, this is MJ at His Truly, locating and educating prodigals at risk in these final hours, moments, nanoseconds prior to the rapture of the church, which we know is more imminent today than it ever, ever was. And praise God for that. How many of you have had enough? I have. <laughs> anyway, um, I wanted to get on here and share about these storms. Um, pray for the people that have been I mean, the Midwest storms, the tornadoes that went through there were horrific. I looked at a lot trending on Twitter um, and saw, you know, some live videos of that, and it was horrific. I mean, tornadoes of the images I have never seen before. Imagine, guys, what is going to happen in the tribulation. That's what's so crazy. We're not going to be here. But... How much closer are we to the rapture? I mean, I look at these, you know, weather patterns and the earthquakes and the storms and everything that is happening right now that is exponentially off the charts that Jesus said would be. And guys, we have arrived. That's something for us to rejoice about. Yet at the same time, it's terrifying for the people who will be left behind. And there will be many left behind because we know that the road is narrow and we're on that road because of Jesus Christ, not because of our own righteousness, not because of anything that we've done. We know that salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, nothing that we've done, not of works, lest any man should boast. We are clothed with his righteousness. We are robed in his righteousness. Okay, and daily we hunger and thirst for his righteousness, those of us who are washed in the blood. And our sins are forgiven, past, present, and future. Our wrath happened on that cross, so we are not appointed to wrath. Okay, that needs to be very understood on this channel, all right, because I see people saying, and you know what, we can still fellowship with people who believe they're going to go through the tribulation, that's all well and good. We're all same fellows in the same ship. We're all fellows in the sh same ship. An old Christian um, patient that I had uh, many years ago while I was a nurse at a nursing home taught me that. You know, that if we believe in the blood of Jesus and salvation is by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, and the gospel, which is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to scripture, that he was buried and on the third day rose again, according to scripture. Then we are all fellows in the same ship. Okay, we have all been adopted into God's very own dear family. We are sons and daughters of God. Now we have a lot of disagreements, okay? But the Bible says, speak the truth in love. All right, and the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. He is the truth the life and the way. And there is no reason whatsoever that Christians need to be debating back and forth and arguing hatefully, may I say. Jesus said, you'll know that my, my disciples don't argue with one another. You'll know that they're my disciples by their love for one another. Okay. He clearly said that. So we can still fellowship. You know, this, this channel is a hundred percent pre-trib. 100% premillennial, and 100% we believe that the Bible is the authentic, literal word of God, okay? Some people think it's meta metaphor or whatever, but anyway, I wanted to share some trending Twitter, you know, I'm, I, I look at Twitter, I have a Twitter account, but um, there are some real things going on in this world, guys. Sodom and Gomorrah is still trending. Sodom and Gomorrah. What did Jesus say? As in the days of Noah and as in the days of Lot, so will be the day when the Son of Man comes to rapture us. What is the rapture? The rapture and the second coming are two separate events. The rapture is when Jesus Christ comes for his bride of Christ, the bride of Christ, the church all over this world. Okay. That's when he appears in those clouds to us. That trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ rise first. And we 
who are alive and remain, are harpazo caught up with them in that air, in those clouds, and ever so be with our Lord. And the Bible tells us to comfort one another with these words, encourage one another with these words as we see the day approaching. And we see that day approaching. And that's what we're doing. We're encouraging one another as the day approaches. Jesus wouldn't tell us, hey, encourage one another that, you know, soon you're going to have your head cut off. He wouldn't do that. God would not do that. Our wrath occurred on the cross. A hundred percent of our wrath. We have tribulation throughout our life. That is not the tribulation. We have tribulations, troubles, all of us, persecutions, uh, you know, trials, so to speak. Trials, not the tribulation. Because the seven-year tribulation, we will not be here. Okay, understand that fact. And I know a lot of you are scared, and I, I see a lot of, you know, um, comments that say, you know, hey, I believe we're in the seven-year tribulation now. No, we're not in the seven-year tribulation now. You can be assured of that. And um, what I tell people is to get yourself a good Bible teacher. The Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So this is something I do myself because especially the last couple years, um, God has had me say, hey, listen, we're done here. We're wrapping it up. I need you to understand. Okay. And we don't understand. We don't on our own because the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our guide and he lives inside of us. Those of us who are born again, because we are sealed with that promised Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. We are justified, just as if I'd never sinned. We are glorified. Our body has already promised glorification. Okay, that is called a done deal in God's eyes. We are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Okay, and there is no greater honor. And we are, in fact, I believe, the final generation and you know how, what would the prophets have done in the old times to be alive and his during these final moments of the end of this dispensation of grace? That's why I believe the enemy is distracting a lot of us, discouraging a lot of us, throwing us into depression, if he will. He can't make us do something, but he can suggest things and we can buy his lie, that's why he's called a liar, hook, line, and sinker. That's why we need to think. Oh, is this really what God says? This is what the enemy does. Same thing, same old story as he did in the garden of Ad with Adam and Eve. Did God really say not to touch this tree? Did God really say you're born again? Did God really say that you're never, ever going to lose your salvation? Did God really say that? I mean, look at you. Come on. He is, listen, he was my companion for a while. So I know, <laughs> I know how he speaks. I know his trickery. I was saved. I was born again. But I tell you what, I was, not all who wonder are lost. Okay. I was a prodigal and I was, had suicidal thoughts. I had everything I could have ever wanted. Nothing I needed. Emotionally. I was an orphan. Spiritually, I belonged to the Most High God. That is a prodigal. The enemy will get you to believe anything and call you out there and tempt you into sin and then turn around and laugh at you and tell you, look at you. You couldn't be Christian. You couldn't be saved. I mean, if you were saved, how could you do this? How could you do this? Romans 8. Read that chapter. Okay, we're living in the flesh. That does not give us justification to sin. The Bible says to draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Okay, there's no temptation known to man that God has not overcome or will not give you by the power of his Holy Spirit within because the Holy Spirit lives inside of us. The same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave abides within us to overcome that old carnal nature, okay? 
There's an old nature and there's a new nature. When we become born again, we are a new creation, created in Jesus Christ for good works that he prepared before the foundations of this earth. Are we saved by those good works? No. We're saved again by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Read the book of Ephesians. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. But the book of Ephesians is one of my favorite books. It tells us who we are in Christ. And I have linked the ABCs of salvation in the description box along with who we are in Christ. If you're not born again and you're listening to my voice, the tribulation is being set up all around us, guys. Cashless society, one world religion. My great-grandmother spoke of this when I was just a toddler, and that was many years ago. And it's happening right now. New world order, AKA the great reset. Okay, how could it be any clearer? But the minds of people are blinded by the enemy. Okay, so if you're listening to my voice and you're not born again, Jesus said that we must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. He said the only way to the Father is through the Son, not through Buddha, Muhammad, Allah, uh, the sins of, I mean, our, the prayers of our ancestors. Fill in the blank, however you think that you're going to, however, what's ever going to be your hijack to heaven. Um, the only way to the Father is through the Son. The only way into the presence of a holy God is to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus Christ. How do we get there? How do we become born again? A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. Why would you need a savior if you're not, if you're not a sinner? The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. All of us, not some of us. Even good people sin. We're born into a condition called sin. We're conceived, the Bible says, into a condition called sin in our mother's womb. Okay, so from the get-go, we had, none of us had a chance. We're born into that condition. So A is to simply admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. B is to believe that Jesus Christ is Lord and that God raised him from the dead. And C, call upon his name. And that B, believe, is very important. It is imperative. Believe that Jesus Christ is not only this world's savior, but your own personal savior for, for the forgiveness of your own personal sins past, present, and future. And when he comes in, he seals you by his Holy Spirit eternally. You are eternally safe. Home base. Okay? You are home. You become a son and a daughter of God. People say that we are all children of God here in this world. That's not the truth. That's not what the Bible says. We are all creations of God. We are not all children of God until we receive Jesus Christ, atoning sacrifice for the forgiveness of our sins. And then we enter in to grace. Then we enter into the adoption. Okay, the adoption process. That there, why, there where we become sons and daughters of God. Jesus Christ is the first fruits of many brethren. All right, so, so A, B, C, admit that you're a sinner in need of a savior. Believe that Jesus Christ is your savior and your only savior for the forgiveness of your personal sins and see call upon his name. And that's it. He doesn't require us to jump through hoops. It's not religion. It's not about religion. It's not about signing cards and joining a church. We are the church when we become born again. We are the body of Christ. Okay. I wanted to get that out. That's some housekeeping and I say housekeeping because if you're not in the house, you know, everything is irrelevant to you. You're not going to understand. You're not even going to understand the word of God. If you pick up the Bible and hope to understand it and you don't have the Holy Spirit inside of you interpreting that word of God, you will never understand the word of God. Yet, the moment you become born again and the Holy Spirit moves in, he shows us everything. You shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Okay? He gives us eyes to see. Everybody is spiritually blind and born into a condition of sin until God removes that veil of spiritual blindness 
and the Holy Spirit moves in, the truth, the life, and the way. All of us deceive ourselves. This flesh is so deceptive, even saved. Okay, so when we see people out there deceiving themselves, that's a very common thing, especially if they're unsaved. That's very common. What do we expect sinners to do but sin? All right, so I can go on and on with that, but I just want to get that out of the way because we want you to be in the house in these final moments. There's not much time left. Um, I am not a date setter. I set a date with Jesus every day, but I don't set a date as to when he's coming back. He could come back today. He could come back before this video is over. And we know that it's soon and so, so very soon. So if you don't know him, please, I beg you, why not? Why not? He's the greatest love this world. For God so loved this world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, and the enemy wants you to believe that God is something else. Let me tell you, I believed it myself. If God was real, why would I have been sexually abused at five? If God was real, why did he take my daddy away? Why was my daddy killed at 18 months old when I was 18 months old and I had to grow up without a daddy? God did all that if he's so powerful. And God, the enemy puts those thoughts in our minds and he makes God the enemy. Okay, so very convenient for him, isn't it? For him to come in and give us a different agenda, different identity, because God is obviously not worthy of being worshipped. Because God did all these bad things, obviously. That's the enemy. And that's exactly what he likes to make us think, when that is not who God is at all. Sin is a condition, and it entered into this world, and Jesus Christ took care of that condition. Okay, my father was killed when I was 18 months old because he chose to put alcohol to his lips and get behind a wheel. But as a child, that's not I what I received into my heart. What I perceived about God and received into my heart was, why did God take my daddy away? What did I do that God would take away my daddy and that I have to be different from all these other children, that I have to grow up without a dad? Understand? Understand that our perception is the most important, most important thing about God. And I grew up Catholic, so there were a lot of barriers that the Holy Spirit had to break down. I was born again in my grandma's church at 11. And she was in a non-denominational church, so I was born again in that church. But because I grew up and went to a Catholic school, Catholic church, um, I had all of that false doctrine that the Holy Spirit had to root out of me. So. All right, so let's go. I want to talk about these storms. This morning when I got up, you know, I was looking at um, this one particular storm. These storms were ripping through the uh, Midwest with fierce looking images. Um, and you know, Satan, the little G of this world, and I'm reading from, I'm gonna read to you guys today from Behold Thine Enemy, my third book. And we know there's an enemy. Uh, and, and he's on the move and a bunch of my own writing here, guys, you know me. So I got up this morning and this is all I've been doing is writing and the Holy Spirit has been showing me things and it's like, wow, wow. So I want to share this with you. Okay. Satan, the little G of this world is on the move because he knows that his time is short. No man, as we said, knows the day or the hour, but we are in the final moments of the rapture and the rapture is just a heartbeat away. So much demonic activity going on in this world. And these, this world is glorifying the enemy in such a way that the enemy got a bad rap, okay? <laughs> Seriously, the enemy got a bad rap that God's, you know, is getting rid of him. And I mean, you would see the things online and shudder. Anyway, um, you notice the lyrics to his songs are frequently about death and about the blood. Huh? which, first of all, he does not hold the keys to death and hell. All right, we know who does. Jesus does. But we know that he frequently, his songs are frequently about death and hell and the blood. Okay? 
Okay, so Satan is not equal to God. Let's get that straight. He is created being by God, and God will use everything, everything that was meant for evil for his own glory. Romans 8, 28. We aren't victims in this eternal chess game if we're saved because we're victors because of Jesus Christ and his righteousness alone. We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. Not of works, lest any man should boast. Once again, the righteousness that God sees when he looks at us is the righteousness of Jesus Christ on that cross. Okay, now, Anton LaVey, you know what's trending on Twitter is uh, uh, Baphomet again. Okay, so, I mean, who would have thunk, you know, Baphomet? Some people don't even know how to spell it. I didn't even know how to spell it yesterday, really. But, um, but Anton LaVey or the Black Pope, or the author of the Satanic Bible, and the Church of Satan, um, his most enduring Satanic symbol is the Baphomet. Okay, and like I told you yesterday, it's a horned goat that the trans are using in these parades or whatever they are. Uh, it's a horned goat with a breast and a female breast and a penis, and I mean, and it's acting as a deity which is absolutely, absolutely crazy. And it's trending on Twitter. I mean, coincidence? No. What else is trending on Twitter? Sodom and Gomorrah. All right. Sodom and Gomorrah is trending on Twitter. But, and I don't know if you got a Twitter account, but I would look at some of this stuff. It's it's just, uh, just amazing. Amazing what people don't know and what people need to know. And who, who can tell them but us? Jesus said, who can I send if not you? You know, Jesus said that. Um, Jesus said to follow no matter what the cost. Jesus said to reach out and help him save the lost. But remember the enemy's tactics for he's a clever, tricky foe. He'll whisper lies and disguise the truth in what you've come to know. It's one of my poems, but... You know, he'll try to get you to think, oh, you know, you're not equipped for this gospel thing. No, no, you can't do that. You can't, you know what, you can't be wrong about this. And, you know, no, God's got your back. If you're a Christian, if you're a child of God, the Holy Spirit indwells you. And the Bible said that everything the Holy Spirit ever gave us, everything that Jesus ever told us, but it's in the book of John, the Holy Spirit will bring back to us at the moment that we need that. So all the scripture that is within us, when the Holy Spirit wants to use that scripture in a certain individual's life, or he will bring that back forth because that's in our spirit. We have that word hidden in our heart and the Holy Spirit will bring it back. So trust that you got this. You're a child of God, you got this. And he will work through you. Because it's not us anyway, it's him. All right, so these storms that went through eight states. When I got up this morning, I was looking at one in particular in Illinois where the roof collapsed in the Apollo Theater. All right, um, the winds were going 145 miles an hour. One killed and um, 28 were injured and five were um, um, severely injured. And pray for those, um, pray for everyone within the, the path of that storm but in all the storms, all the tornadoes, but that particular Apollo theater was having a concert. Um, Morbid Angel was one of the groups. Uh, it was an anti-Christianity concert, obviously. Is that why the storm hit? That's not what I'm saying. Okay, so get that out of your mind right away. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying it's the wrath of God. I'm not take it for what you will, but I'm just saying, I want you to hear the groups that were in there. Um, and this morbid angel actually, and I looked this up this morning. I mean, this is how crazy. I'm like, I wonder what kind of songs they sing, morbid angel, you know? I wouldn't listen to the lyrics, but. And they coincidentally sing a song called Rapture. Hmm. Anyway, wow, yeah. So another one was uh, 
Skeletal Remains is another group, and Revocation, and the Crypta Band, okay? So they're death metal band. You know, they're all death metal bands, and it was a sold-out concert, by the way. Um, and so I just want to tell you a few of the... Um, a few of their Morbid Angel songs is Rapture, Opening of the Gates, Suffocation, Blessed Are the Sick, Immortal Rules. Oh, Immortal Rights, I'm sorry. So those are five of their songs. They're famous songs, I guess. And I mean, who doesn't want to miss a concert like that, eh? And the Crypto Band, their songs are From the Ashes, Possessed, I Resign, uh, Bloodstained Heritage, The Dark Night of the Soul, Under the Black Wings, and The Shadow Within. Hmm. Skeletal Remains, the other group. Their songs, five of their most trending songs, Congregation of the Flesh, Beyond Cremation, oh, Eternal Hatred, Tombs of Chaos, Stench of Paradise Burning, okay, and Revocation, their songs. Five of their songs. Uh, Recrucified. Nice try, Satan. Lessons in the Occult Theft. Witch Trails. Scorched Earth Policy. And Cradle Robber. All right. So. And there was a sign that was, um, you know, within the earthquake, I mean, within the storm damage. And... It had on the words, I know, I, I'm just crazy. I'm just looking at, so I'm looking at these words. Essa, and I don't know if the words, some of the words of the were taken off of there, but Essa, Dole, Rack, Els, Jens, and Yardy, and uh, Loss. So I'm like, let me look up these words in Hebrew, because it was just a hanging sign, you know. And I, I don't know, I just, I, I do that weird stuff, look up a lot of stuff in Hebrew. I actually get blessed by it, but this particular sign, Esau means Yahweh is salvation. God is salvation. Um, dull or doi, trick or deceit, or D-O-L, dying of laughter. R-A-C means empty, worthless. Um, A-L-C-E in Spanish means to lift or to raise. Um, yarm, yarm D is to spiral downward. And loss is angels. So, you know, I just happen to look up those things thinking, I don't know. There's just so much sickness. You know, and if that is like Sodom and Gomorrah, what's going on here? I mean, that is so satanic. So satanic. And if God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah for what Sodom and Gomorrah did, how much closer are we to the rapture of the church? You know, um, I mean, looking at Disney with their predatory behavior, and um, if you aren't familiar with what I'm saying about Sodom and Gomorrah, read Genesis 19, 1 through 38. You know, Joe, Joe Biden declared yesterday regarding trans day of visibility that transgenders are made in the image of God and the soul of America. Well, I don't even really want to get into that, but we are made in the image of God. Uh, but they are being made into the image of the little G, Satan. Okay? Remember, he copied, copycats God. Everything that God does, he wants to do. So he wants people to be created in his image. And I'm just going to stop right there with that. Okay. Because, uh, yeah. Yeah. That's not created in the image of God. Because that is most horrific. All right. I'm going to read to you guys from, yeah, those bands that... That roof actually collapsed on that theater, the Apollo Theater. And I just happened to look up those bands and some of their songs. I'm thinking, you know, we are so in the final moments. Guys, we are so in the final moments. 
That is so beyond demonic. Such an affront to get in God's face and just say, yeah, we're reworking the cross here. You know, it is blasphemy. Blasphemy. All right, so this is from Behold Thine Enemy. Oh, what a tangled web we weave when we first practice to deceive. This is called Web of Lies. When life forces us to see the cruelty of this world at a very early age, we're literally trapped. Like a spider weaving its delicate web are the lies indoctrinated into our souls from well-meaning parents and religious organizations and other significant authority fe figures who honestly believe they're instructing and educating. Can we say these parents who are allowing their kids to be another sex or transgender? Parent is a verb, okay? Jesus said it would be better for a rope, a millstone to be hung around your neck and thrown than to thrown into the, the deep water or I forget what it was, than to have one of these little children go astray because children are so innocent, so gullible. So parent is a verb. We don't just go with the flow. Like this is 2023, this is not 1970 or 1980. No, God is the same God yesterday, today, and forever. All right? So they believe they're instructing and educating. And, you know, our parents that raised up us also, you know, many of have made mistakes. No parent is perfect. Adam and Eve had the perfect parent. And look, they went astray. They're, every family is dysfunctional, okay? <laughs> Starting in the garden. But God was a perfect father, and he is and always will be. He's perfect. This invisible web can and does often begin before birth, entangling its twisted roots deeply into our personalities, cleverly extending a counterfeit identity with the sole purpose of assassinating the true character that we were spiritually destined to receive. Remember, Satan came to steal, kill, and destroy. If he can't take our salvation, which he cannot ever, he likes to take our character, our identity, or distort the character of our loving Heavenly Father. Okay? We have to pull those strongholds down. We have to know who God truly is, who Jesus truly is, the Holy Spirit within us. We have to understand that God is for us, never against us. Okay, and if God be for us, who can be against us? Nobody. Okay, my web. Not only was my perception of God and religion totally misleading, someone had to convince me that my identity was other than what the word of God stated that it was. Someone. Someone had to whisper subtle lies that I believed and received as truth. Having been inducted into Catholicism at an early age, I perceived God to be punishing unreachable deity who would remain displeased with my behavior, regardless of how hard I tried. Although it's partly correct, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 3.23, that religion failed to inform me that Jesus Christ became my propitiation, my substitute for my sins, past, present, and future, granting me complete peace with God, peace based solely upon the fulfillment of his death, and resurrection, never based upon my works or lack of works or failing to perform forbidden practices such as praying to Mary or departed saints. Mm -mm. Yeah, we're not saved by works. And this, uh, yeah, I, I wouldn't, you know, pray to Mary and do that stuff because I had an inst I got saved at 11, like I told you, but I had to go back to the Catholic school, Catholic church. And, and I knew. That was the Holy Spirit in me. I knew that there was something wrong with people praying to Mary. I knew that there was something wrong with praying this rosary. I knew. Okay, I just instinctively knew that's the Holy Spirit's seal inside of us. He is real. The Holy Spirit is real. Contrary to popular opinion, like that spider web, the human soul remains distorted in its thinking, perceptions, and conclusions until we become born again and allow the Holy Spirit of God to the opportunity to unravel and transform our faulty perceptions. Weaved into our subconscious minds, the traps and snares of the enemy blind us like cobwebs in our minds. They lay hidden and out of sight, distorting our perceptions 
and blocking out the light. For me, the idea of anything or anyone in authority even remotely close to me made me shudder for the simple reason that my trust had been violated through sexual abuse as a young child. So why would I trust anyone in authority? That victimization served as, served as a cement in the foundation of my soul, crippling my ability to trust, program, programming me to rebel, run and hide from anyone in authority, including and most especially God. I internalized the lie that I had to perform to be accepted and because of my gross inability to perform anything acceptable to God, why even try? Little did I know that God had already eternally bridged the gap between my ungodliness and his holiness the nanosecond I believed the gospel message at 11 years of age and received Christ as my personal savior. I had absolutely no idea that his power could and would transform my scarred soul with its many strongholds, nor was I yet aware that such strongholds even existed. Due to this ignorance of spiritual warfare and the enemy's relentless pursuit of me, it would take many years until I'd finally hearken to the glorious voice of my Savior. Only then would the Holy Spirit commence to unravel the complexity of my web and release me from the demonic cement encasing my soul. Often, as was in my case, the entanglement begins before birth. Prime example, my mother casually visited, casually visited a fortune teller when she was pregnant with me. And that demonic agent, without hesitation, told her that she was carrying a boy, a lie that my mother wholeheartedly believed and received without understanding that this modest act of curiosity opened wide a portal to the demonic realm. Although she was surprised and even blessed that the baby she had been carrying was a girl, that seemingly innocent betrayal was the first opportunistic foothold that the spirit of rejection would initiate in the life of my soul. Adding to the fuel of the fire, my dad was killed when I was 18 months old, reinforcing that stronghold of rejection, establishing a vacancy that none but a fatherless child would understand. This vacancy provided the perfect breeding ground for the enemy to offer toxic alternatives to a heart desperately seeking to escape. And I can assure you that I latched onto that bait without resistance. I can't educate you on how the deceptive web of lies began in your life. I can only testify why a false identity formed on my behalf and how this unseen enemy played a pivotal part. Five years of age, I was sexually abused and threatened that if I ever told anyone, both myself and my mother would be murdered. Who but a hostile enemy would viciously clothe a child with such shame and crippling fear? My soul internalized that shame and because of another man's sin, I became a shame-based person, totally silencing the budding character yet to form. Because these destructive events were never addressed, my self-image quickly evolved into a classic rebel with a rapidly developing alcohol and drug addiction, ever so desperately seeking to anesthetize the pain that so desperately sought to consume me. As a teenager, I began to steal on a regular basis after my papa's death from cancer, cars, retail, whatever I wanted, justifying in my twisted mind that the attitude that I deserved it. Life was unfair and that God must be mad at me to take both my father and the man who raised me, my papa. Today, I know that I stole back then because my innocence was stolen from me. Simple as that. My entire childhood with any hopes and dreams of the future were viciously and senselessly aborted by the hands of a perpetrator. And I simply lacked the resources to further heal. So indeed, the enemy gains a substantial foothold in childhood due to demonic environmental activity, activity that we have absolutely no power over whatsoever. Whatever's going on in our home, as a child, we have no control over what's going on environmentally. Looking back, I don't recall that I was ever intentionally fascinated or willingly approved of evil in my life, fearful maybe, but never fascinated. I never consciously provoked its visitation into my life, I can assure you of that, but neither did I have the power to prevent its crippling effects. The atmosphere I grew up in as a child played a key role in contributing to the daily sense of impending doom. And when I say impending doom, that was my daily companion that I experienced, programming my heart to expect the worst. It was a perfect storm, a setup for enemy seduction. Yeah. God was there when that web was spun, and he desperately desires to uncover damaging secrets you've yet to even discover about yourself 
while there is yet time. Only he can prevent spiritual cobwebs from becoming what we so de de deceptively embrace as earthly decorations. Don't we sometimes think our cobwebs are decorations until the Holy Spirit shows us? Uh-uh. Let's get that out. That's, that's a cobweb. That's from the enemy. That's not from me. That never originated from me. That wasn't meant to be part of your identity. That's a cobweb. And we so readily embrace this stuff as part of our identity, part of our character. It's crazy. Today I see the enemy's web corrupting the world we live in, but I'm not touched by it. I can look at it straight in the face and never be threatened or immobilized by fear. For greater is the power that worketh in me than the cowardly power that challenged me. In my desperation, I have cautiously learned to abandon myself to God, relinquishing toxic emotions, irrational conclusions, and the required faith that ferociously spun that wicked web. When you know better, you do better. Simple as that. Know better. Okay? God said, if any man lacks wisdom, let him come to me. If you're a child of God, he will give you wisdom. That's his word. That's his promise. I daily ask him for wisdom. God didn't chastise me for my faulty belief system, nor did he punish me for repeating defective generational patterns. He just switched on the light, tore down that web, and helped me build a new foundation. He is a carpenter after all. Bottom line, sin is a prison, and we're all sentenced to death. But God. Ephesians 5.13, But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Ephesians 2, 8, and 9. I know we're at 42 minutes, but I'm going to go ahead on to chapter 7 behind the mask. Who is Satan? And I do this one all the time. I know there's a devil, for his demons had me in chains. A prisoner of sin and torment that started out as an innocent game. My hands were tied behind me with handcuffs made of steel. This life was one big question mark. My nightmare was very real. I wanted to run just as fast as I could to where I did not know, hoping to escape hell's fire and find shelter away from this foe. Through my journey into darkness, I felt a hand reach out to me. He said that he was my savior and only his blood could set me free. He promised to protect me, keep me from all harm, clothe me with his righteousness, and give my heart a song. He handed me the book of life and his words were very clear. This is my plan for all of mankind. You'll find your way in here. Basically, that was my life in a nutshell, a prisoner. Life was a constant state of confusion, chaos and drama. I truly had no clue why. Like a pawn in the game of life, I was merely along for the ride, retaining zero power to change or question my direction. Who knew? And if someone did know, why didn't they notify me? Thus, my urgency to actively inform you that you do have an enemy who hates you the moment you became born again because you are a threat to his kingdom. Many people do not know that the devil at one time actually served God inhabiting heaven. The prophet Isaiah gives a glimpse into what caused his fall, resulting in his becoming our adversary. God did not create Satan, rather he created the most glorious angel in heaven, known as Lucifer, the son of the morning. He was majestically beautiful, but it is now sinister with dark supernatural ability operating from high places. The Bible refers to Satan as the deceiver, destroyer, liar, murderer, and thief, whose sole purpose is to steal, kill, and destroy whatever and whomever he can while he still can. We all have different images or definitions of what or who an enemy might be. Some say it's the obvious evil existing within our daily world, i.e. thieves, rapists, murderers, Taliban, ISIS, Hitler's unthinkable murder of over 6 million Jews, or on a more personal level, level a deceptive, unfair boss, cheating spouse, ex-spouse, you name it. The list goes on and on. He's the influencer of all evil and works through whoever allows him access. When Lucifer fell, he took one-third of the angels with him. We call them demons, and Satan is their master. Many people imagine the devil would be that little man, red man in cartoons with horns, tights, and a tail holding a pitchfork. Dangerous and harm, harmful depiction, ever so far from the truth. 
and exactly what he wants this world to believe. Um, before he fell, Satan in his original wisdom and beauty was the consummation of perfection. Now his profane hunger is to pull God down from his throne. <laughs> Impossible feat. By endeavoring to distort God's glory in the hearts and minds of those who seek him. God's not real. Why are you even seeking him? Is he showing you any evidence that he's real? Look at everything that's going on in this world. Look at all the wars and all the killing and everything. If there really was a God, same old story back in the garden. Did God really say, if there really was a God, blah, blah, blah. Satan uses the same old script. The Bible also describes Satan as angel light, as light bearer. So we know for certain he must have a beautiful side or at least a deceptively satisfying side. Or why would Hollywood be so intrigued? Yep, you're catching on. The influence of demonic spirits. Second Corinthians 4, 4 says the devil is called the God of this world. That's little g. So we know that demonic forces are certainly at work. Influencing world leaders. Hello, fake media. Our faulty belief systems and our perceptions. Actually, Satan is the existing force behind every work of darkness. The internal dialogue inside everyone's head screaming that we're not okay that we'll never be okay, that God is mad at us, blah, blah, blah. Some of his most common titles, devil, slander, Lucifer, son of the morning, prince of darkness, angel of light, God of this world, father of lies, Beelzebub, Belial, roaring lion, serpent, dragger, accusant, go on and on. He is the adversary of God and God's lineage. And you can bet that as long as he's permitted access, he will relentlessly plot to deceive and distract the world with special coverage on the elect. Have you ever considered just what or who he came to steal, kill, and destroy, and why? It might be to your advantage to find out because you, my friend, are not exempt from his radar. A true treasure, our spiritual inheritance, can't be stolen. I'm going to say that again. A true treasure, our spiritual inheritance, our eternal security, eternal security, can't be stolen, but it can certainly be hidden from our sight. As evidenced by the media and current headlines, racism, hatred, rioting, looting, vandalism, murder, share today's spotlight, and you can bet you Satan has everything to do with that spotlight. The devil doesn't just shake your hand and say, pleased to meet you, won't you guess my name? On the contrary, he beguiles us into believing that we're receiving extraordinary privileges or rewards when he offers us his will, his ideas, and his evil intentions. But sadly, that exchange eventually leads only to his ultimate goal of destruction and death. Since the fall of man in the Garden of Eden, his intent is to deceive the world however he can, by whatever means he can, for as long as he can. The enemy works through whoever allows him access, as I said. He is a created spirit being of the order of angels called cherubim and has a well-structured rank of demons, fallen angels, tending to his business. It's not the Republicans or the Democrats or the independents call it causing this havoc in the world. It's Satan. 1 John 3, 9, for this reason, the Son of God was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. Boom. And yes, my friend, the works of the devil are more than abortion, death, thievery, destruction. More often, they're subtle, hidden snares, webs that are lying deep within the subconscious mind that, left unresolved, eventually lead us down roads that God never intended for us to walk. With strangers, he never intended for us to meet. Satan will one day be eternally assigned his place in the lake of fire, Revelation 20:15. But now the Bible warns us to stay alert. Watch out for your great enemy, the, the enemy the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5, 8. Bottom line, don't let that someone be you or me. So yes, I felt just led to share that today. And, um, and I have been praying for you guys. I want you to know it is so difficult the resistance you know I can feel it in my spirit I can feel the resistance whereas once I could feel just only the peace of God that passes all understanding now I feel the resistance 
and that resistance is to pray. All right. And then when I pray, then I feel a release from that resistance. Sometimes God is putting that, you know, that pressure to pray through, you know, pray through that. You know, don't go into something. Don't walk into something like before every video that I do. And, you know, I know I make mistakes, that's for sure. But before every video that I do, I ask for the Holy Spirit just, just to anoint these lips of clay. You know, whatever you want me to say from this book or that book or whatever book, um, Holy Spirit, just bring bring it to life. Just you use me, use my lips, use my life, use my mistakes, use my testimony, whatever. And we should be doing the same, all of us as Christians. We have nothing to hide. We have nothing to be ashamed of. Our testimony is our testimony. Some of us have fallen to greater depths than others. Some of us have down, been down crazier roads than others. Like I said, not all who wander are lost. And some of us have wandered pretty far. But here's a promise, Romans 8, 28. God causes all things to work together for good for those that love him and are called according to his purpose. And he uses those things that we endured in that walk to help other people. Okay, it's 51 minutes. What am I trying to beat my own record here? But I love you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you have a good day tomorrow fellowship. And if you don't have somebody that you can, that you go to church or that you listen to um, scripturally, I would recommend J.D. Farag, J-D-F-A-R-A-G.org. He is a Calvary Chapel pastor out of Hawaii um, that gives weekly prophecy updates that are very relative to what is going on right now. It's jdfarag.org. You can fast forward the worship, you know, and get straight to the message. And because he also gives another message. Um, or Andy Woods. I listen to Andy Woods or the great, late, late, great Chuck Missler. Um, Billy Crone, getalifemedia.com. You know, just faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You guys have a wonderful weekend, a fabulous weekend. Know that I will be praying for you and lifting you up to the throne. And God says that we can come boldly into that throne because of the blood of Jesus, because of who we are in Christ. Remember, I've linked the ABCs of Salvation in the description box along with who we are in Christ. Know who you are in Christ in these final moments because we are, we are under attack most often. But greater is he that is in us, beloved, than he that is in this world. I can't wait to meet each and every one of you in those clouds. I love you guys. Um, Till next time, hooking up. Our redemption draws nigh. God bless you.